love this outdoor work. My railroad was attacked this morning, Schindler. And you hired those gunmen, you filthy swine! Charles, you can't prove that. Why, you... Clear the way, Meyer. Much obliged to you, Mr. Uh, Brady, is the name. <laughs> My card, sir. I'll be in your office at 10 o'clock in the morning to discuss a business proposition. Tomorrow morning. Oh, monsieur, who is going to pay for the damage? Why, the broth of a boy who did it, who else? Oh, but there wasn't that much damage, Monsieur Brady. That includes the price of the dinner, too. However, if my pheasant's gotten cold, I'll demand a half-carat change. Oh, naturellement, Monsieur Brady. Naturellement, Monsieur Brady. And with only half his feathers on. And if it isn't my favorite batty rooster, Sergeant Michael Francis O'Connor. Hey, come to view the splendors of the world of fashion. As I've always said, if you're going to make money, you've got to look like money. Of course, it does happen that I'm also here in the call of duty. It is my unpleasant task to haul you off to the station house. Now, wouldn't you think that on a man's last day in the force that they'd let him sit and rest his feet on the top of a table and snooze a bit? What may I ask? Was a charge of any? Assault and battery on the complaint of one Mr. Meyer. Uh, put on your lid and let's go, Jimmy Bucko. And you with your shoes in that condition. Uh, well, uh, you see, there was a puddle in the street where I stepped off the horse car. You know, that sanitation department isn't working. Charlie! Shine. I, I don't want my shoe shine. Just call it the present for me on your day of retirement. Oh, <laughs> well, that's very nice of you, James. Uh, and now, and now I'd like a present from you. Put the shoes back on. Ah, uh, just an hour. One little hour. One hour? For what? For a business appointment. Don't you trust me, Michael? If you can find one individual in the entire city of New York who trusts you, I'll give you the hour. Charlie! trust you, Mr. Jim. Well? I'll mind you. One hour. Samantha, Colorado. Town of a dozen silver mines and no railroad. You've got a $250,000 franchise if your railroad can reach the town limits by noon on October the 1st. But your tracks have been stopped here because this pass, which is the only way into Samantha, has been blockaded by hired gunmen. You must have enemies, Mr. Enright. How could you know about the pass? I also know that you need that $250,000 desperately to keep from putting your entire operation into bankruptcy. Is there anything else you know? Yes. I know how to get your railroad into Samantha on time. Just how would you do that? <laughs> now, 
And in order to find that out, it's going to cost you three things. The first of which is $15,000 in cash. That's expense money. And? In the future, you'll buy all of your steel railroad cars from the firm for which I sell, Barber and Yates. And what else? Your complete faith and trust in my ability. Hmm. Nothing else? Just those three things? No. Well, Mr. Brady, I realized that you wanted something from me, but I didn't know just what it was. So I did a little checking up, too, on you. You do have an amazing range of friends. Gamblers, swindlers, brawlers, sportsmen, pugilists, ladies of the theater. Doesn't make you sound like a saint, does it, Brady? To get your railroad into Samantha, Mr. Enright, the last person in the world you need is a saint. The last person I need is you. Well, very good. I'll mention our conversation with Schindler when I see him this afternoon. Wait a minute. We'll do business. But I have conditions, too. In the first $10,000, not 15000 Agreed. Second, a man of my choosing to accompany you to Colorado to handle money and all necessary transactions. You've got a deal. It's a pleasure to do business with a man after my own heart. Michael, me by. It's been an hour already. Brady, you'd be lodging in the tombs right now if it wasn't for the fact that they didn't want to waste a lot of time doing paperwork on my last day on the force. Thank you, Michael. And how lovely you look in your civilian clothes. <laughs> you think so? Well, well, I'll see you when I get back, old friend. Goodbye now. Henry, was he looking for someone you were? Well, well, as a matter of fact, I was. A man with money. Is that a fact? <laughs> a, a banker, I suppose. No. No, more the bookkeeper type. Well, tell me. How will you recognize this heartless creature in such a crowd? Well, well, he'll be carrying a satchel about that big. With money in it. Ah. Uh -huh. Like, uh, this, perhaps? You? <laughs> a certain Mr. Enright called the station house checking up on you. And himself and myself got into a beautiful friendship. And he offered me a very peculiar job. I'm to handle the money. No. Yes. You men could hold off an army from up there. Yes, they have. I don't know how many hired guns they got up there, but any man that goes anywhere near that pass comes out feet first. Do you have any idea who the leader of that gang might be? Yes. Young pistol named Walters. You know him? I think it's around. Last month he held up the Illinois Central. Well, I think I'll take a ride up there. You want to go along, Van? Not on your tin type. I had my rations for being shot at. And Michael Francis O'Connor doesn't intend to draw his rations at all at all. <laughs> that Diamond Jim Brady is ready to talk a deal. But what makes you think he's going to come down here? You give him this. Tell him there's plenty more where that came from. Glass. 
Then I'll take it back. You ain't one of them Indian givers, are you, Brady? Where's your friend? He can't stand altitude. Well, you went through a lot of trouble to get up to see me. What's on your mind? I don't know what you're paid for being up here. How would you like to make double to get out? Double means we're talking about $60,000 in cash. Let's make it around 50. Well, let's not quarrel over a mere 10,000. All right. You get your men out of the pass, I'll have the money waiting for you down at the foot of the canyon at sundown tonight. That way you can take the loot and we can all wave goodbye to you. Now, Brady, you're not going to get me down there in the open. You want a deal, you bring the money up here. That's final. You want to make a deal, you get your men out of the past. That's final. Your hat fell off. Now you turn around and get out of here before your buttons start dropping off, too. Now your hat fell off. You know you're a dead man, don't you, Brady? Next time, just in case there is no next time, I'd better get my piece of glass back. Can't stand altitude. Can't stand low altitude. Yep, this is Samantha. And to think that good men are risking their lives to get to this mud hole. Until they opened the silver mines last year, that cannon was the only thing in town that was worth more than 20 cents. Mm. I wouldn't give you that much for the whole place. <laughs> well, what now? Got to try to find a friend of mine. Maybe you've heard of him. Man by the name of Roger Taft Hill. That blackguard is a friend of yours? I thought he hated railroads and anybody who had anything to do with them. He does. But the last time we had a run, he threatened to shoot me on sight if he ever saw me again. <laughs> he said the same thing to me. <laughs> if it ain't Jim Brady. <laughs> Glad to see you, Jim. Yes, sir, as far as this old child's concerned, you're a sight for sore eyes. Welcome to Boot Hill, Jim. <coughs> oh! No offense, man, Jim. <laughs> That's right. No offense. You left that as sharp as you used to be, Jim, boy. <laughs> Vice versa. It's a great town that we have for fighting, Jim. It's a pity we have to waste on each other. What are you doing up here, snack of the wood? Looking for you. You mean you're that hard up for a fight? No. Oh, I want to ask a favor of you. You just ask it. This child will do it. Show me another way to get that railroad into Samantha without going through the pass. Up through that pass over my dead body. That's my private hunting grounds. That railroad's going through someday whether you like it or not. Now you can keep it out of the pass if you'll show me a way around it. Keep it out of the pass? Why didn't you say so? I did. You just don't listen. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Keep it out of the past. Jim, I'll show you another way to Samantha. Yeah. <laughs> stopping here for? Well, that's just the place for your railroad, Jim boy. Railroads run on dry land. That's a swamp. Go ahead, walk on it. You're too hard than I thought. Go ahead and walk on it, I say, right there. Sorry, Jim. I uh, must have made a mistake. Let's move on a bit. Now I remember. We'll try right over here. No, you'll try this side. Always glad to show you the air of your ways, Jim. used to walk clear across. It's a regular underwater rail bed, isn't it? Well, I don't know what you call it, but it's solid. Clear across. Are you sure? Watch. <laughs> of course, sir. There's a hole here now you got to fill up. Maybe we can bring a spur of track across the swamp. We're going to need at least a hundred more men, and I don't know where we're going to get them. You find us a hundred men? Well, I could get you a hundred engines real easy. How soon can you get your hundred engines here? I ought to have them here by tomorrow morning. Good. You know, we still haven't solved everything. Somebody's going to have to keep Walters busy up in that pass, or he's going to smell a rat. Well, now, there's fighting men you're talking about. I can dig you up the meanest passel of vomits would ever bit a man's ear off. Then you dig him up. Have him meet me in the town square at 8 o'clock tonight. Now give me five minutes inside. Then when you hear an awful racket, get to work and get out there. All I can say is it's a strange night's work for a man who spent so many years upholding the law. my appreciation, I'm going to tell you about a surprise that I have planned for the Ladies' Musical Society concert on September the 30th. I'm having a string quartet sent out all the way from New York City just for that one evening to compliment the beauty of your voice. You should be very proud of these ladies, Mayor Pierce, since they're the wives of yourself and your alderman. <laughs> so much talent wed to sober wisdom. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Pierce, I believe you said that uh, the Anvil Chorus was one of your specialties. It is, it is. Oh, ladies. <laughs>
looks like Brady's got himself an old cannon. About a dozen men down there. No, he did something. That's right. Bring me some of that water. I wonder what they think they're going to do with that. I don't know, but that's an awful lot of men just to shoot a little old cannonball up here. Well, bring me some more ammunition. Come on! Hurry up! Just let them move in closer and then we'll... That ought to keep them penned down till we get our railroad built through the swamp. Let's get it loaded up again. I don't know, I've shown you how it works. Do you suppose you can keep that cannon hot? Christmas come early this year for this boy, Jim Boy. Well, where are you going? I'm letting doze myself in a bath, a shave, and a shoe shine. Bath and a shave? Just when things are getting interesting? I got some thinking to do. I always think better when I'm clean. Besides, you told me you were the fighting man. You just believe it. Seeing himself up for the ladies. And every one of them is as homely as sin. What a man will do for a dollar. Don't you cry for me. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. We had that railroad pinned down nice and pretty till that Brady showed up. Now they got us pinned down. They must be up to something. They're not building any closer to the pass. What do we do? We take a look on the other side. Good thing you come out here, Mr. Enright. Now you know what we're up against. I couldn't stay in New York. I want to see my train pull into town tomorrow, before the noon deadline. You're going to wear that out. When we get the train into Samantha, you can buy me a new one, huh? What a little muscle is! Things must be quiet at the pass. Yeah. Let's double up the guard tonight. If I was Walters, I'd... Do just what he's doing. Take cover!
blow a hole in our trestle. Well, that puts the lock on it. You can sell your cars to Schindler now. We've still got 12 hours left. Three days' work to do. So we push a little harder. Well, all right, let's go. You heard what the man said? Let's go! <laughs> I've seen a few Irishmen go down to me, David. I never saw one that didn't go down fighting. This crew is paid for until noon. I see that you get your money's worth. Chicago Pacific Railroad time? Nobody asked you here, Schindler. Well, somebody's got to pick up the pieces of the Continental Railroad at, say, um, two cents on the dollar. <laughs> Who's that coming out? Looks like the mayor and the alderman. Mr. Mayor, we did all we could. Well, just a moment, Mr. Enright. Mr. Russell, the county engineer, is about to take a reading. Speaking through that thing for her. Uh, yes, Mr. Russell? Near as I can say, you're about uh, inside the county line, 10 feet. County line? Mr. Enright, it gives me great pleasure to present you and your Continental Railroad with this check for $250,000. I don't understand. Well, you can't do that. He didn't meet the deadline. The town boundary is almost a mile away. This is a fraud. Fraud, Mr. Schindler? The mayor and the alderman of Samantha met just about an hour ago and decided to incorporate as a city. <laughs> Being far-sighted men, they voted to extend the town line as far as legally possible, which was to the county line. We made it! We won! The railroad's in! <laughs> the thing you boys didn't slow down, did you? Oh, perhaps you'd like the honor, Mr. Enright. Congratulations, Mr. Enright. Well, thank you, Mr. Brady. Oh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, it's a lovely black heart you have, Jim Brady. But tell me, how did you ever pull this one off? Hmm. Them that has them, wears them. 